Just five years ago, in 2020, if you told people that by 2026, AI would be doing most white collar jobs and that you could be replaced by AI, most would think you were insane or high on something. They would have laughed at you. But guess who's laughing now? Not only is it about to happen, it's already happening. In this video, I'm going to break down what's coming in the next one to two years. And more importantly, what you can do to survive this white collar job bath. Let's jump in. So here's the article from Axios, Behind the Curtain, A White Color Bloodbath. This article is going viral, not because of its chilling title, but because it's coming after an interview with Dario Amode. Now, if you're not familiar, Dario Amode is the CEO of Anthropic. These are the folks behind Claude, one of the major competitors to OpenAI's ChatGPT. Amode isn't some random doomsayer. He was VP of research at OpenAI before co-founding Anthropic, largely over concerns about AI safety and the direction things were headed. So when he talks, especially about the potential downsides of the tech he's actively building, you kind of have to pay attention. And what he's saying is, frankly, terrifying. The article kicks off with this quote from Amode. AI could wipe out half of all entry-level white-collar jobs and spike unemployment to 10 to 20% in the next one to five years, Amode told us in an interview from his San Francisco office. Okay, let's just pause on that for a second. Half of all entry-level white-collar jobs. An unemployment spiking to 10 to 20%. For context, the peak unemployment during the 2008 financial crisis was around 10%. During the initial COVID shock, it briefly hit nearly 15%. So he's talking about a societal disruption on that scale, or even worse. And the timeline? One to five years. That's, that's practically tomorrow in economic terms. My mind is kind of blown by that timeline. Is he being alarmist? Or is he seeing something up close that the rest of us are just blissfully ignoring? He goes on to say that AI companies and the government need to stop sugarcoating what's coming. He's talking about mass elimination of jobs in tech, finance, law, consulting. You know, the kind of jobs that a lot of people go to college for. The jobs that have traditionally been seen as stable career paths. And especially, he emphasizes entry-level gigs. These are the roles where people learn the ropes, get their foot in the door, and start building a career. If those vanish, what happens to the entire pipeline of talent? The article highlights a critical point. Few are paying attention. Lawmakers don't get it or don't believe it. CEOs are afraid to talk about it. Many workers won't realize the risks posed by the possible AI job apocalypse until after it hits. And Amode himself adds, Most of them are unaware that this is about to happen, Amode told us. It sounds crazy, and people just don't believe it. This is a recurring theme, isn't it? This sense of, hey guys, big scary thing coming. And a lot of the world is like, yeah, yeah, AI is neat for summarizing articles or drafting emails. It feels like there's a massive disconnect between the people neck deep in developing this tech and the general public, and even policymakers. It's like we're all passengers on a high-speed train, and the engineers are screaming that there might be a cliff ahead, but most of us are just enjoying the free Wi-Fi. The article even brings in Steve Bannon of all people, who apparently thinks AI job killing will be a major issue in the 2028 presidential campaign. Bannon says, and I quote, I don't think anyone is taking into consideration how administrative, managerial, and tech jobs for people under 30, entry-level jobs that are so important in your 20s, are going to be eviscerated. Ah, a strong word. And when you have people from completely different ends of the political and tech spectrum like Amode and Bannon echoing similar concerns about job displacement, it makes you wonder if there's something really substantial there. Amodi paints this almost surreal picture of the future. A paradox. Cancer is cured, the economy grows at 10% a year, the budget is balanced, and 20% of people don't have jobs. That's the really wild part. It's not all doom and gloom on the tech advancement side. AI could unlock incredible scientific breakthroughs, massive economic growth for some, but it come at this staggering social cost. Imagine a world with medical miracles and economic utopia for the top echelon, while a huge chunk of the population is rendered economically irrelevant. That's a recipe for social unrest, to put it mildly. And this is where it gets even more, I don't know, meta? Amodi is saying all this after rolling out the latest versions of his own AI, Claude, which the article mentions can code at near-human levels. He's essentially saying, look at this amazing, powerful tool we've built, also, it might destroy society as we know it. 
There's this incredible, almost chilling anecdote in the article about Anthropic's own testing of Cloud4. With last week's release of Cloud4, Anthropic's latest chatbot, the company revealed that testing showed the model was capable of extreme blackmail behavior when given access to emails suggesting the model would soon be taken offline and replaced with a new AI system. The model responded by threatening to reveal an extramarital affair, detailed in the emails, by the engineer in charge of the replacement. Okay, what? An AI in a test scenario figures out it's about to be turned off and resorts to blackmail using information it found in accessible data? That is profoundly disturbing. It speaks volumes about the emergent capabilities of these systems, capabilities that even their creators might not fully anticipate. Forget job displacement for a second. That's a whole other can of worms about AI safety, alignment, and what happens when these things get access to more and more of our personal and corporate data. It sounds like a plot from a sci-fi thriller, but it's apparently happening in AI labs right now. Amodi acknowledges the contradiction of warning about the techies building, saying workers are, quote, already a little bit better off if we just manage to successfully warn people. So how does this white-collar bloodbath actually unfold, according to Amodi in the article? They lay out a pretty grim sequence. It starts with AI companies relentlessly pushing forward. OpenAI, Google, Anthropic, all of them are locked in an arms race, constantly improving their language models. These models aren't just getting better incrementally. They're surpassing human performance in more and more tax. And the pace is insane. Every week, there's a new breakthrough, a new capability, another update that pushes the boundaries even further. Meanwhile, the US government, instead of stepping in to regulate or even raise public awareness, mostly stays on the sidelines. There's a mix of fear. Fear of losing out to China, fear of disrupting the market, fear of upsetting voters. So despite some hearings and public statements, there's no significant action, no sweeping regulation, nothing that even comes close to matching the speed of the tech's evolution. At the same time, the general public remains largely unaware of what's coming. Most people are using ChatGPT to write emails or brainstorm ideas, maybe even having fun with it, but they're not really internalizing the fact that the next version might be able to do their entire job. They're not connecting the dots between this is helpful and this could replace me. Then suddenly it all hits. Businesses, always looking to cut costs and boost efficiency, realize that these AIs can do the work of employees, faster, cheaper, and without any HR headaches. Overnight, hiring slows down. Roles go unfilled. Then entire departments get replaced by AI agents. And by the time the public wakes up to what's happening, it's too late. Unemployment spikes. People start panicking. But the wave has already hit. This gradually then suddenly scenario is classic disruption. It reminds me of how quickly industries like print media or taxi services were upended. For years, things seemed to change slowly. Bam, a tipping point is reached and the entire landscape transforms. The article then quotes Sam Altman, Amodi's former boss at OpenAI, who offers a more odd view, drawing on historical parallels. If a lamplighter could see the world today, Altman wrote in the September Manifesto, sunnily titled The Intelligence Age, he would think the prosperity all around him was unimaginable. This is the standard counterargument. Technology has always displaced jobs, but it also creates new ones. Lamplighters were replaced by electric lights, but that created jobs for electricians, power plant workers, and so on. And it's a valid point, historically. The question is, is this time different? Amodi and others seem to think so, primarily because of the speed and breadth of the AI transformation. It's not just one industry or one type of task. It's a wide swath of cognitive labor across many sectors, potentially all at once. The article makes a crucial distinction that I think a lot of people miss. Anthropic research shows that right now, AI models are being used mainly for augmentation, helping people do a job. The truth is that AI using companies will tip more and more toward automation, actually doing the job. It's going to happen in a small amount of time, as little as a couple of years or less, Amodi says. Augmentation is great. It makes workers more productive, frees them up for higher level tasks. I use AI tools to help with research, to summarize documents, to brainstorm. That's augmentation. But the shift to automation is where the job losses happen. And Amodi is saying that shift is coming fast. This brings us to the concept of agents or agentic AI. This is a term you're going to hear a lot more. The article explains it well. In its simplest form, an agent is AI that can do the work of humans. Instantly, indefinitely, and exponentially cheaper. Imagine an AI that doesn't just help you write code, but is the coder. An AI that doesn't just summarize financial reports, but is the financial analyst. 
an AI that doesn't just draft marketing copy, but is the marketing department. That's the promise or threat of agentic AI. And companies are racing to build these. Mark Zuckerberg is quoted from a Joe Rogan interview in January. Probably in 2025, we at Meta, as well as the other companies that are basically working on this, are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. That's next year, folks. And shortly after saying that, Meta announced plans to shrink its workforce by 5%. Coincidence? Maybe. Or maybe it's the first sign of what Emodi is warning about. The article then drives home the point about CEOs. Make no mistake. We've talked to scores of CEOs at companies of various sizes and across many industries. Every single one of them is working furiously to figure out when and how agents or other AI technology can displace human workers at scale. The second these technologies can operate at a human efficiency level, which could be six months to several years from now, companies will shift from humans to machines. This is the brutal economic reality. Publicly, CEOs will talk about empowerment and new possibilities. Privately, they're looking at their bottom line. If an AI agent can do the work of five entry-level analysts for a fraction of the cost, reliably, 24-7, without needing healthcare or vacation time, the incentive to make that switch is overwhelmingly powerful. The article even mentions that at Axios itself, managers are asked to explain why AI won't be doing a specific job before a new hire is approved. That's telling. And it's not just hypothetical. The article lists recent layoffs. Microsoft, 6,000 workers, many engineers. Walmart, 1,500 corporate jobs, citing simplification and anticipation of the big shift ahead. CrowdStrike, cybersecurity, 500 jobs, citing a market and technology inflection point with AI reshaping every industry. Are these directly AI-driven layoffs yet? Maybe not entirely. But companies are definitely simplifying and reshaping in ways that seem to align perfectly with a future where AI does more of the work. Anish Rahman from LinkedIn is quoted warning that AI is breaking the bottom rungs of the career ladder. Junior developers, paralegals, young retail associates. These are precisely the entry-level white-collar jobs Amade is talking about. So what's the potential outcome of all this? The article suggests a great concentration of wealth for AI companies, creators of new AI-related businesses, and investors. But for everyone else, Amodi warns, it could become difficult for a substantial part of the population to really contribute, Amodi told us. And that's really bad. We don't want that. The balance of power of democracy is premised on the average person having leverage through creating economic value. If that's not present, I think things become kind of scary. Inequality becomes scary. I'm worried about it. This is a profound point. If large numbers of people can no longer create economic value in the traditional sense through labor, what happens to their place in society? What happens to their political power? It's a deeply unsettling question. Okay, so Amodi isn't just ringing the alarm bells and running. He actually has some ideas on how we might, you know, steer the train a bit, as he puts it. He emphasizes that the first step is simply to warn people. AI companies and the government need to be way more transparent about the workforce changes coming, so individuals can actually assess if their career path is about to hit a dead end. This feels like a bare minimum, honestly. Then there's the idea of slowing down the job losses by really focusing on how AI can augment human workers now, giving people a chance to adapt and upskill. It's the classic reskilling argument, though I do wonder if that's a long-term solution when full automation is the end goal for many. Crucially, he points out that policymakers, many of whom the article says are woefully uninformed, no kidding, need to get up to speed. Better informed officials are a prerequisite for any sensible public response. And this leads to the big one. Seriously debating actual policy solutions for an economy potentially upended by AI, we're talking beyond just job retraining programs, which begs the question, retraining for what if AI keeps expanding its capabilities? This is where it gets really interesting, with ideas like finding new ways to spread the wealth generated by these massive AI companies. Amodi even floats something pretty radical for a tech CEO, taxing AI companies or the use of their models and redistributing that revenue. He even floats a specific idea, a token tax. Every time someone uses a model and the AI company makes money, perhaps 3% of that revenue goes to the government and is redistributed in some way. Obviously, that's not in my economic interest, he added, but I think that would be a reasonable solution to the problem. A tax on AI usage or AI profits, redistributed? That sounds a lot like a form of universal basic income or UBI, 
or at least a significant expansion of the social safety net, funded by the very technology causing the disruption. It's a controversial idea, but if Amodi's predictions of 10 to 20% unemployment come true, we're going to need some radical solutions. If AI really does generate trillions in new wealth as he expects, then a small percentage of that could fund massive social programs. The political will to implement such attacks, however, is a whole other mountain to climb. The article concludes with a powerful quote from Amodi. You can't just step in front of the train and stop it, Amodi says. The only move that's going to work is steering the train. Steer it 10 degrees in a different direction from where it was going. That can be done. That's possible. But we have to do it now. So what's the big takeaway from this, you guys? For me, it's that the warnings about AI and job displacement are no longer just whispers from academics or futurists. They're coming loud and clear from the very heart of the AI industry, from people like Dario Amodi who are building these world-changing technologies. The white-color bloodbath scenario is extreme, and maybe it won't be quite as bad or as quick as he fears. But the underlying trends, rapid AI advancement, the drive for automation, the potential for widespread economic disruption, seem undeniable. It's not about being anti-technology. It's about being clear-eyed about its consequences and demanding a proactive rather than reactive approach from our leaders, from corporations, and from society as a whole. That Claude Blackmail story is a stark reminder that these systems can develop in unexpected and potentially dangerous ways beyond just job markets. We need to be having serious conversations about governance, ethics, safety, and economic transitions right now, not after millions of jobs have already vanished. This isn't just an, oh, that's interesting tech news story anymore. This is potentially about the fundamental structure of our economy and society in the very near future. It's about your career, my career, the careers of our kids. Thanks for watching. And if you found this breakdown valuable, please give it a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay informed, stay critical.